Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Leviticus chapter 14, and beginning in verse 2, or 57 verses. Verse 2 says, this is the law of the leper, versus this shall be the law of the leper. So one is present, one is future tense. Verse 4, the word spun has been omitted, spun scarlet. Verse 5, over, uh, kill one bird over an earthen vessel versus in. So you're killing them in the vessel. Uh, verse 6 proves that verse 5 is correct uh, because the vessel would have to be broken to get the bird out, but there is no mention of the bird. So let's read that. As for the living bird, he shall take it, the cedar wood, the spun scarlet, the hyssop, he shall dip them in the living bird into the blood of the bird that was slain over running water. So it was killed over the running water. And the Maz says the same thing uh, over running water. Uh, but it can't be killed inside the vessel over running water unless you drown it inside the vessel. Kind of uh, morbid to think about that, but uh, it was killed over a vessel okay and then and before i continue i just want to say uh this is the channel uh where we compare the masoretic text to the septuagint and see which one is telling the truth and uh we know that the septuagint uh existed at least 300 years before jesus christ came to earth as a human being Whereas the Masoretic came after he died, uh, at least, I believe it was 400 years or 700 years after his death, uh, to as much as a thousand years in terms of the way it was developed. Okay, so that's our introduction there. I'm going to try to keep working on that introduction. Uh, verse six. Okay, so it proves verse five is correct. Verse seven shall be. Verses shall pronounce. So he shall be clean versus he shall be pronounced clean. Or shall pronounce him clean. Verse 8, this has been versus is to be. Uh, and the man that has been cleansed shall wash his garment. So he's already cleansed, past tense, versus that is to be cleansed. So future, he isn't cleaned yet. Uh, so that's a big difference. And then house versus tent, uh, he shall remain out of his house. Uh, I mean, yes, they did dwell in tents, but not everyone lived in a tent. Verse 9, this is the second instance I can recall where one is required to shave off all his hair and uh, not just the hair on his head. So it shall come to pass in the seventh day, he shall shave off all his hair, the, the former leper, his head and his beard and his eyebrows and all even all his hair, he shall shave. And that says the same thing in both translations. He shall wash his garments. So the only other instance I can remember of shaving all your hair, man or woman, and for this uh, ritualistic uh, holiness or purity, uh, cleanliness, is the Nazarite vow or the law of the, uh, the purified, I believe it is also known as. Verse 10. A small cup of oil versus a log of oil, uh, which is less than half a pint. Either way you translate it. It is roughly around the same quantity, so it's a difference of semantics uh, and terminology. Verse 12, set them apart. Uh, so let's read that. The priest shall take one lamb, um, etc., and set them apart for a special offering versus uh, for a trespass offering, a log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering. So uh, you can see this term wave actually means se separate for a separate offering. So they're essentially they're same as they are saying, expressing the same thing, but in our modern vernacular, you don't know what wave means. Uh, wave means set apart. 
and that's a continual difference throughout. So that's what it really means is set apart the word wave. Verse 15, into the palm uh, was added, the palm of his left hand. Um, we're not sure how they poured it. Probably was into his palm, but it wasn't written there. And the sept. Uh, and we call the Septuagint the sept for short and the Masoretic the Maz for short. Just too many syllables. Uh, going into verse 16, this verse implies that it most likely was is his, into his palm. <laughs> so let's read this. He shall dip with his with the finger of his right hand into some of the oil that is in his left hand. Well, how can you do that if it's on the, the other side of your hand? It has to be your palm. And he shall sprinkle with his finger seven times before Yah. And then uh, verse 17, on the place of the blood versus upon the blood. Um, so it's a place of blood versus the blood itself. Probably where the blood was shed or uh, was poured in the sept. Verse 20, the whole verse was omitted. Uh, or the should say the word whole was omitted, not the whole verse. So a uh, whole burnt offering, that's a continual difference throughout the books. Sacrifice, sacrifice versus meat offering. Verse 21, for a separate offering uh, versus uh, to be waived. 24, place them for a set offering versus waive them a wave offering. And then verse 26, the Septuagint would be better translated as an instead of, instead of on. Uh, that's just my opinion, so let's read this. And the priest shall pour of the oil on his own left hand. Uh, in, so I'm saying in his left hand, not on his left hand. Uh, but that's just my opinion again. Verse 28, notice the last part lines up, uh, but in verse 17, it differed. So in verse 17, we saw a difference of the place of blood and upon the blood. And now we see that the priest shall pour out, shall put of the oil that is on his hand on the tip of the right ear of him that is under purification on the thumb of his right hand, on the great toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And then we see here, on the place of the blood, so they agree. Uh, verse 29, purged uh, versus to be cleansed. Uh, 30, afford versus can get. Uh, so we can see it's not for a lack of... Uh, resources in the mass it's just what you can find is he resourceful is he is he observable can he is he observe observant of his surroundings what can he get what can he find is he able to search what he needs but no that's not what it means in the sept it's saying what can he afford he can find what he needs to sacrifice good sacrifices but he may not be able to afford it he might be poor uh, verse 32, for him was omitted. This is the law for him. Uh, so it doesn't say for him in the mass. And then who cannot afford versus his hand is not able to get again. That's a continual difference, but it's just a little It builds on what does it mean can get. It means what his hand is not able to get. So he's not able to, for whatever reason, doesn't specify in the Maz. The Sep says, well, it's because he's poor. Because economically, you just cannot get it. That's the factor there. Economic factors, economic reasons. 34, the houses versus house. Uh, first, because it can spread from house to house, possibly. The leprosy of a house. It sounds like mold to me, but anyway. Verse 36, remove the furniture 
versus empty the house in the Maz. Verse 37, cavities versus hollow strakes. Uh, beneath the surface as well versus lower than the wall, which is perhaps perhaps means the lower layer of the wall. Uh, there are different layers to a wall. Verse 40, uh, houses were made of stone, uh, which means Yeshua must have been strong to be a carpenter. So let's, or a house builder. Let's see. Uh, let's read this. The priest shall give orders. They shall take away the stones in which the plague is and shall cast them out of the city into an unclean, unclean place. Uh, so I've read many uh, explanations of was Yeshua a carpenter or a, a master builder? Was he just a jack of all trades? He could build anything? Or was he just an expert in building houses or tents or, or what have you? Uh, I've read that he is a master builder. He can build many things, but he focused on uh, building places of living, uh, abodes. Okay, uh, verse 37. We said that already. Okay, verse 42, plaster versus mortar. Okay, uh, the, the first instance there, other mortar, other plaster. Verse 44, confirmed versus fretting. So confirmed leprosy. Fretting means eating or devouring, and that we've noticed that previously. Verse 46, at any time, uh, if he goes into the house at any time, versus goes in to the house all the while okay um a little difference there's a small difference there uh, if you go in at any time means any time uh versus all the while so meanwhile i think that's how i read that verse 30 47 and be unclean until evening okay he that sleeps in the house shall wash his garments and be unclean until evening he that eats in the house uh, shall wash his garments. So eating or sleeping in it, you will be unclean until evening. So it doesn't say that in the Maz. It doesn't say that he's unclean. Why is he washing his clothes? Because he's unclean. So you got to wash that, uh, your, your clothing. Okay. Uh, verse 49, the clean living birds was omitted. So it says here, he shall take to purify the house to clean so these are not unclean birds, as we read in Leviticus 11. These are clean birds, turtle doves, pigeons, uh, and they're alive. They're not dead already. Uh, and then 51, bird is slain over the running water versus and in the running water. So one is killing him somehow over the running water. I'm not sure if they're pouring the water into the nostrils or something or they're just drowning it out right and then it says uh, dip in blood only um, not in both blood and water this is a very specific action and and an order so any deviation may actually will and all the cleansing if you stray from this uh, instruction so you sprinkle the the house seven times you dip it into the blood uh, so the reason i say this is because in 51 verse 51 says you dip uh the hyssop you you, you take the cedar wood the spun scarlet you dip them into the blood of the bird and then you sprinkle the house seven times with that blood in the Masoretic, why I say this is a big difference, and I'm going to qualify that right now. It is a big difference. Because Yah's instructions, our Father's instructions are very specific, and they need to be followed to the letter, to the Spirit, but to the letter as well. Because if you don't, there are repercussions, there are consequences. And in this case, you may not be able to clean the house. And so let's read it in the Mass. It says here, he shall take the cedar wood, etc., and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, okay, and in the running water. Okay, so now you're diluting the blood or you're washing it off and sprinkle the house with what? The diluted blood 
or the blood mixed with water. No, that's not what it's saying in the Septuagint. So you're actually adding to the law. <laughs> and so you kind of annul the cleansing that would otherwise take place if you follow it to the letter. Verse 56. So I'm going to call that the title of the video. Uh, blood and water, maybe. 56, a sore versus rising. And clear spot versus a scab. Last difference is 57, declaring to teach. Uh, sorry, declaring and of declaring in what day it is unclean versus to teach when it is unclean. Um, and then the word day. And in what day it shall be purged, and in what day it is unclean. Um, that is omitted twice, the word day, and uh, versus when. Uh, in what day, in what day it shall be purged, versus when. So that's all I have to present to you for Leviticus 14. Uh, thank you very much for your time. May uh, bless you and make you prosperous. You've been watching Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Shalom.